What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Algebra Born with Mr. Peters. In today's video, we're talking about how to rationalize the denominator. And what we're going to do is look at three different methods to successfully do this. And with that being said, let's get started for today. The first thing we need to know, guys, with this topic is that we cannot have a radical in the bottom of a fraction. This is what we mean when we say rationalize. We're going to get rid of that radical in the denominator. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And as we do this, guys, the importance of this part of the video is to understand perfect squares and radicals. So we know here, this is not a perfect square. So for us to get rid of it, we can't simplify it. We have to multiply it by itself to simplify. And what you guys need to know is that anytime you multiply a radical by itself, it's the same number without the radical, right? And the reason why, when you multiply radical 5 or radical 5, you get radical 25, and this is a perfect square. It, simples back, it simplifies back down to 5. So always remember that rule. Now, when we rationalize the denominator, when I do this step here of multiplying by itself in the denominator, I got to do the same thing in the numerator, right? So after I do this, I'm going to get radical 60 over 5. But guys, the most, the most important thing you guys have to understand is that this answer is not simplified. You always have to simplify radicals. So I can break this down, right, as the square root of 4 times 15 all over 5. Once we simplify, that perfect square comes out. And we're left with 2 radical 15 over 5, and that is it. Now, what is the difference between this problem and this? I'm going to show you. So typically what students will do, if they do not see that perfect square at first, they're going to do the same step, right? And then they're going to say, okay, I multiply the same radical by itself. This has to be 25 because they're focusing on the, st the steps so much that they didn't realize this is a perfect square, right? So this would be wrong. We wouldn't need to rationalize this denominator because it's a perfect square. Once we simplify, we would have five over the square root of 25, which is five, and then we'll simplify this answer to one. So like I said, wrapping up the first section of this video, we need to know when we rationalize a denominator, right, versus just simplifying a perfect square. We only need to do this if it's not a perfect square in the denominator. And with that, let's go to part two of our video. In the second part of this video, guys, we're going to rationalize the denominator now. But what happens is we're going to have to simplify and we have to think about this coefficient right here. And I'm going to show you guys two ways you could do this same exact problem. So let's start off, right? We know we need to rationalize, so I'm going to multiply by the denominator. I get just 5, right? Number without the radical, basically. So now from this step, right, rationalize the denominator, I'm going to multiply by radical 5 up top 2. Now once I do, 2 stays the same. Radical 18 and radical 5 are multiplied together, and we're going to get radical 90. Now, at this step, guys, there is no radical in the bottom, so we rationalize and we're good. However, you guys know with fractions, or just with radicals, we always have to check to see if we can simplify, and we can. So let's write this equal sign now, right? 2 times radical 90, we could break that down as the square root of 9 times 10 all over 5. Now once we simplify more, 9 comes out and it turns to 3. So now we have 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by radical 10 all over 5. And my final answer would be 6 radical 10 over 5. Now you guys are probably saying, Peters, why would I want to know another method when I already know one already? Sometimes, guys, it's just good to know more than one method. It helps you to think a little bit more, and you'll see different things. So let's go back to this same problem, right? So we have 2 radical 18 all over radical 5. So what I'm going to do this step now is I'm going to check to see if I could simplify my radicals from jump. And I can, right? 
So once we simplify, this top part turns into two times radical nine times two, because that goes into 18. We're going to keep radical five the same for right now. We're not going to worry about this. So now when this nine turns into three, right, when we multiply, we're now going to get two times three times radical two all over radical five, right? You got, you got to see how the answer's coming together. So we continue going. So now it has six radical two over radical five. So we simplified that radical in the top part of the fraction in the numerator. Now let's, now, I'm sorry, let's rationalize our denominator. So now I multiply by radical five in the top and the bottom. I know if I multiply the same radical by itself, it's just a number without the radical. And now in the top, we have six times radical two times radical five. We can't do anything with six, but radical two times five is 10. And look at this right here. Your boy Peter's got the same answer. Now in the last part of this video, and I really hope you guys are staying to the last part because it's the most important. We're going to talk about simplifying and rationalizing denominator when there is more than one term in the denominator. Let's go to part three. In part three of the video, guys, we're now rationalizing the denominator when we have a binomial expression, right? So we have two terms. And this is important, right? To understand this, we have to understand the difference of squares, right? So x plus four times x minus four. Right, when we go ahead and FOIL, what happens is we just multiply the two first terms and the two last terms because the two middle terms are going to cancel. Right, so this is what the answer should be if we fold it all the way out, we'd have x squared plus 4x minus 4x minus 16. Like I said, middle terms cancel out. Now, why is that important? Because the same thing is going to apply here, guys. For us to get rid of the radical, we have to multiply by what is called its conjugate. And the conjugate is just a crazy uh, <laughs> a word to say the same exact thing with a different sign. So what do I mean? To rationalize this denominator, I would multiply by 2 and radical 3, right? The same expression, but instead of it being subtraction, it's now going to be positive. Why? Because of this concept right here. Oops, I dropped my, dropped my calculator, guys. My bad. All right. So let me show you what I mean. So once we multiply 2 and 2, we're going to get 4. 2 times radical 3 is going to be 2 radical 3, right? Positive. Negative radical 3 times 2 is going to be negative 2 radical 3. And we know radical 3 times radical 3 is negative radical 9. So when we focus in the middle, this is gone, but we're now left with 4 minus radical 9. But remember, this is a perfect square, so it turns into 4 minus 3, which equals 1. So now let's, let's just bring this back into perspective. So what does this mean? So at this step, right, we have 5 over 1. So we simplified the denominator. What we did not do was multiply the conjugate by the top. So now I'm going to multiply by 2 plus radical 3 in the top part. And understand, guys, I could get rid of this 1 in this fraction. I'm just keeping it there for the purpose of this problem, okay? So now with this step, I just distribute. 5 times 2 gives me 10. 5 times radical 3 is going to give me plus 5 radical 3. And just double check the paper. Yep. This is our final answer. Now, before I let you guys go, we're going to do one more problem, and we're going to go through it a little bit faster just to make sure we're all on the same page with this topic. So let's do some erasing. All right, so in our second problem now, this is what we have. We have 4 divided by radical 5 plus radical 3. Right. So now we're trying to rationalize the denominator. We have a binomial expression. So we have to multiply by the conjugate. What does that mean? The same exact expression with the opposite sign. So instead of addition, subtraction. Right. Now I'm going to rewrite this in the top. 
radical 5 minus radical 3. Now let's take care of the bottom part first, right? This is going to give me, this is 5, right? Because we multiply the same number without, when we multiply the same number under the radical, it just gives us a number without. 3 and 3 now, so this is minus 3. We know on the bottom half of the fraction, the answer is 2. So let's write that out. Answer is 2 on the bottom part of the fraction. Now we go back to the top. 4 times radical 5 is just 4 radical 5. This is a 4, guys. I know it's like a 9. I'm sorry. Then we go back 4 times negative radical 3 minus 4 radical 3. And if you think that I'm done with you guys in this video, I'm not. Why? You know why. 1, 2, 3. We could simplify this fraction by dividing this by 2, this by 2, this by 2. Radicals are going to stay the same. So my final answer should actually be 2 radical 5 minus 2 radical 3. You know we cannot combine these two because they do not have the same number under the radical. And with that being said, guys, I had to double check my answer. With that being said, Thank you guys for joining us today on our video. We really hope you found it helpful. If you did, smash the like button for us, subscribe to our channel, leave comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel, or if you guys had questions on today's video, thank you so much for joining us today.